I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We are returning again to Ezekiel. We will actually be reading several chapters in Ezekiel right now. This will be chapter 3. Ezekiel made a watchman unto the house of Israel. Their blood is required at his hand unless he raises. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. In Revelation, John is also given a book and told to eat it. And this is symbolic of a calling. He's being given the words of the book and he has to eat it, symbolizing that this is the message he is sending. This is what he is being called to preach. He has to declare the words of this book. Verse 4, And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be rebelli a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. This is Ezekiel's calling here. And I like this. The, uh, you know, I'm not sending you to a place that you don't know the language. We're sending you to the people. They know your language. They're Israelites. You all speak Hebrew. You can't use the excuse that it's hard to communicate with them. They don't have the excuse that it's hard to communicate with them. Matter of fact, if I sent you to people who it was hard to talk to, they'd probably listen to you. But then he says, I like that, uh, as, adam as an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Now, in the footnotes, it says adamant uh, or diamond is another possible translation. But the, I, the impression I get from that, I'm, I could be wrong, but I get the idea that you're going to butt heads, is the idea. They're going to be stubborn, you're going to be just as stubborn. You're going to butt heads. But don't worry, I strengthened your head. Your forehead's nice and hard, so that when you butt heads with them, they're the ones getting knocked out. Let us continue. Verse 15. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib, that dwelt by the river of Kibar, and I sat where they sat, and remained there, astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, and the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Ezekiel sees this great vision on the shores of the river, river Kibar. 
And at the end of the vision, he is taken by the Spirit of the Lord to the community at Tel Abib. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And he's just like, what just happened? And he's kind of just, he, he's shocked on it. He's kind of, he's in a state of shock. For seven days, he does nothing. And then God comes back to him and says, look, I sent you here to warn these guys to give them the message. If you don't give them the message, you're going to be the one condemned, not them. Get out there and start preaching. Verse 22. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river Kibar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. He is told to go out into the plains, where he goes out, and he is again sees a vision, sees the glory of the Lord, and it overcomes his body. He collapses, but the spirit picks him back up and says, okay, now you're going to go into the house. And when they tie you up and they bind you and they're telling you to, and they're demanding that you talk to them, I'm not going to let you. You're, you're going to stay silent. But when I come to you and tell you to give them a message, you're going to go out and give them a message. They are a rebellious people, but we're going to give them the message so that they have no excuse. Now, like I said, if, if, they're, if they're putting you in prison, if they're doing all this to you, then we're going we're gonna to stop the message. But when I decide to send them a message, when I come in and give them a message, then, and only then, will you be allowed to speak. See you in chapter 4.